Hello there. We're just now approaching week six of the War Within Alpha. All the new zones have been open for testing and we've had access to a bunch of major features. So I think it's a good time to start diving a little more into the details of what the new expansion has to offer and to try and answer a question that I always like to ask, which is what does the new expansion feel like to play? As always, I'm going to avoid story and quest related things. One of my favourite bits of a new expansion is diving into the questing and new storylines and I'm making a point of avoiding that stuff as much as I can. I will however in my videos be discussing and sometimes diving deep into gameplay, visuals, zones and all of that stuff. And this week I want to take a look at the new zones and ask the question, what is it going to feel like to spend 18 months or so in the new areas? This video is going to have footage of the new zones, so do be warned of that. The first zone that we encounter is the Isle of Dorne. Broadly speaking, this is a pretty standard modern World of Warcraft open pasture zone. If the term pasture brings something like Stormsong Valley or the Anaran Plains to mind, that's a pretty accurate impression of what to expect. Broadly speaking, the zones feel as predominantly open grassland with areas of forest. At the time I recorded this video, the zone is also very empty feeling. I do suspect that Blizzard have some more work to do in the zone in terms of spawning more NPCs and even quests. There's a bunch of areas with structures and maybe one or two friendly NPCs which very much look to me like unused side quest hubs, so I'm pretty confident that this will change a lot before it goes live. One thing I am going to say is that it's going to feel very familiar and comfortable which isn't necessarily a bad thing for a World of Warcraft zone, but at the same time, there's nothing really to make it stand out as the first zone you encounter. The Io also happens to have the main hub city of this expansion, Dornagal. Lore-wise, this is a city of the Earthen, a race created by the Titan Keepers. It was the Earthen falling to the old god's curse of flesh that led to the evolution of the dwarves, and Blizzard have done a great job of creating an architectural style that immediately reminds you of dwarfing construction and culture, while at the same time managing to be quite visually distinct. There's a mixture of structures built into the surrounding mountains and freestanding constructions with lots of signs of industry and manufacture. Like the dwarfs, many of the buildings are inverted, with the sleeping areas in the inn, for example, being downstairs in windowless underground rooms. The inn itself has a very interesting design. The beds are tiny, even for a dwarf. On that subject, the earthen NPCs are a lot smaller than I'd been expecting from Blizzard publicity, which implied to me very large dwarfs. Instead, they seem to be broadly similar in size to dwarfs, and honestly, I don't know how they sit in the chairs and the beds that are in those in. Unfortunately, that does make it a little harder for me to envision my character being comfortable there, which is a great shame. Design-wise, a lot of effort has been put into elements that should give it a very cosy feel, and it's without a doubt one of the most intricate and interesting inns in the game. The city also has all the usual amenities, banks, auction house, crafting hub, and even a trading post. Yes, no more portaling back to Stormwind in the first of the month. The city is, for me, one of the best realised cities since Boralus. It's not on the same scale as Boralus, but there is, without a doubt, an awful lot to explore here. Overall, it is going to be a decent place to stay for the expansion. I just wish that they'd invested in some Draenei sides beds. The Ringing Deeps is the second zone, and this takes us underground, and we get to use the airlock technology from the Zaralek Caverns. Now, I don't know if it's just down to the alpha being less active in terms of player numbers, but the transition feels massively smoother than it does in Dragonflight. I don't know about you, but I've found the airlocks in Dragonflight to be quite buggy, with noticeable lag spikes every time I use one, and at least once a week they bug out completely and force me to have to Alt-F4 to recover. But on the alpha, the transitions are as smooth as butter. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this is an indication of some evolution of the technology, because it will make the game feel a lot better if they are this smooth on live. The Ringing Deeps is, without doubt, very cavern-like. Like the Zaralek Caverns, it has a rock ceiling with lots of vertical features in it and obstacles that you might have to avoid when you're flying around. It is, however, notably higher than the caverns, so it should nevertheless feel a lot more convenient to navigate. 
especially it's designed to look like a giant underground mine. Right from entry, you get the impression that it's been dug out by the earthen. There's lots more of the earthen structures and architecture, but the star of the show for me is the earthen railway network. This railway network adds a lot of visual interest to the zone. I had fun on the alpha just following the network around the zone. Sadly, at the moment, it is very static. There are a few non-moving carts here and there, but I'd love to see activity like mine carts or maybe little trains buzzing around. I'm hoping that something Blizzard do have plans to add, but at the same time, it might be a little much to expect from them. Well, a fair bit of the zone definitely does feel underground with lots of rock and even some more fiery molten areas. There are also areas which are a lot lighter in tone, even with some greenery. And indeed, there are openings in the ceiling of the cavern, which allow the impression of natural light coming into some of the areas. This does do a great job of creating a lighter feel for the cavern. And I suspect this might be a bit of a reaction to some of the player feedback about the Zaralek Caverns. One very new interesting feature of the new continent is that every zone is getting to have its own town or mini city. These are significantly larger and more intricate than the local hubs in Dragonflight or indeed in many of its predecessors. They don't have all of the amenities, but they do create a really nice sense of space. The hub for the Ring and Deeps Gundargaz, sorry about my pronunciation there, is very similar to Dornagal in design, which makes that sense that it being another Ersan town very strong indeed. Moving on now to Halifall, and one thing I had been concerned about was that the zones would all feel very disconnected from each other in the same way that the Shadowlands zone did. But the good news is that while there is an element of that disconnect between the Isle of Dorn and Dornagal, the three lower zones do feel a lot more connected to each other. You are going downwards all the time, and that does limit the number of paths you can take between the zones, but the links feel like very short caves, and Blizzard have even placed the route between the deeps and Hollowfall right beside each other, so getting from Dornagal to Hollowfall won't actually feel like all that major of a journey. Hollowfall is one of the most visually interesting zones ever produced. While it is underground, the main part of the cavern is a huge open area whose sky is dominated by the massive glowing crystal, which gives it a very much outdoor feel. This is enhanced by clever use of mists and clouds to conceal the roof of the cavern and create very much a skylight appearance. The lighting in this zone is uniquely directional for World of Warcraft. Generally in WoW, the light just comes from almost directly above, leading to minimal shadow. But in Halifall, it's clear that the light is coming from the crystal, which is off to the western end of the zone, and it casts very distinct shadows. The sky is also alive with giant Arathi zeppelins, and they cast their own shadows too, which means you don't even need to look up to know when one is passing overhead. The zeppelins, combined with the Arathi architecture, which is very human-like, but not completely human, gives the zone a very science fiction steampunk feel, and this is extended by the use of very alien looking plant life. Make no mistake, this does look and feel like a wow zone, but at the same time, it's different enough so that it gives you a kind of feeling of it being both alien and comfortable. The Arathi buildings are a kind of a fusion between Gilnean and Stormwind human architecture, which creates a feel of much older human building style, which does fit the Arathi lore very well. The main hub city is outstanding, offering a comfortable and homely feel. It does not quite meet the heights of Boralus, but in many ways it definitely manages to surpass Dornagal. The Inn in Meraldar, which is the name of the zone, is one of the most intricate, interesting and well-realised buildings I've ever seen in World of Warcraft. It's possible to go in one door, wander around the inn and exit by a completely different door. Make no mistake, there has been a significant step change upwards in the quality of buildings in this new expansion. In fact, it's actually enough to make me a little sad that this is not the main hub city. The Earthen City is very good, make no mistake about it, but this is a much more cosy and comfortable feel, and I can much more easily visualise my character wanting to spend all our time here. Sadly, with no auction house or bank, it's unlikely to ever become very busy with players, which is a huge shame. 
I do wonder if this was once planned to be the hub and if perhaps the reaction from the players of the Zaralek Caverns made Blizzard decide to put the hub above ground, but I guess that's something we'll probably never know. I do hope that Blizzard does give us some more reasons to visit and spend time here, but even if they don't, I suspect that this is going to be a very busy and popular area in RP servers. There are loads of very interesting buildings around the area, some of which are quite empty and would be ideal for PR style events. And the quality of the props inside those buildings is truly sublime in my opinion. Finally, let's go on to Ash Kahet. This zone also feels very connected to the other zones. You do go down far enough that I do start to wonder if they are using their airlock links here, but honestly, if they are, it's really hard to tell. The zone itself is surprisingly bright for its spider theme, but at the same time, it does manage to achieve both alien and organic feel. The landscape design borrows from the insect layers of Silithus combined by both webbed and fungal looking structures to drive home that this is not a place that the humanoid races are meant to be. There's actually two cities here, a friendly one, the Weaver's Lair for us to rest in, and the much larger City of Threads which is most definitely not a safe place for us. The Nerubian architecture feels like a fusion of the architecture from Aberys with Nagar architecture from Najatar, and it does a great job of creating the impression of a very alien but at the same time highly advanced culture. Our city is less intricate than the other one which is understandable, this probably isn't meant to be an area that we'd want to spend much time in, if that makes sense. That said, I do think that the developers have managed to avoid the mistakes they made in the mall, where their desire to make it a place that no one would want to be managed to extend out to the gameplay side, making it a place that we also didn't enjoy as players either. In this case, while this is clearly a place that our player character would be hesitant to venture into, I do suspect that the zone is going to be interesting enough from a gameplay perspective that we'll be able to settle in quite well. That is provided that the actual gameplay in the zone stacks up. While I personally didn't really mind the Zaralek Caverns as a zone, for me it was more the rare heavy gameplay that didn't land, I certainly saw a lot of feedback from folks for whom it didn't gel at all, and I had been a bit concerned that the underground nature of the zones and the use of airlocks might end up with the new areas really not landing for a big part of the player base. But having experienced it, while I'm sure there will still be some folks who will dislike it, I think that for many it's going to turn out pretty well. As well as the Isle of Dawn being above ground, Halifalt really doesn't feel like it is underground, and in the other two zones, between the lighting and the extra space, it's very clear that Blizzard have put a lot of effort into addressing the feedback from the Dragonflight and Shadowlands. I don't think I've ever found quite as many areas in a World of Warcraft zone that are as rewarding to just go and explore than is the case in these new zones. The settlements don't have the scale and bustle of Boralus, but they more than make up for that in their intricacy, depth and the use of props. You can genuinely feel the level of effort and love that has been lavished on them by the folks who put these together. And so, to answer the question that I posed at the start of the video, how do these zones feel? Three out of four of the zones feel very pleasant places indeed to be, and the other, Ash Kahet, well, we're clearly not meant to be there, but even so, they have in my view avoided much of the dullness and impressiveness of the maw, and it's still going to be a place that I think we're going to be able to enjoy, provided that gameplay does work out. We may not be welcome in the New Nubian Heartland, but at least the game is not going to feel like it hates us as much as the characters we encounter. Oh, and Blizzard, please, put some trains in those rail tracks. But what do you think about the new War Within zones? Are you excited to explore them? Are you worried about the underground nature? What would you like me to check out and explore in the Alpha and Beta? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this video even vaguely interesting and would like to see more information from the War Within, let me and the YouTube algorithm know by hitting that like icon. And to make sure that you're notified when my next video goes live, also hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it. Subscribing is by far the best way to support my channel. That's all for now. I will be back soon.